Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to another reaction that soon. Yes, yeah, so this one is actually the Inside the World. It's, um, I believe, from what I understand, it's uh, more focused on like just showing the different environments and all, rather than like the gameplay itself, like the combat. Uh, so yeah, let's see. Like, let's see. I I'm really intrigued to see like what the graphics will look like on these like different environments. So let's get going. <laughs> The world of The Last of Us is dangerous. Unless you're living in a protected area, there is something lethal around every corner. Once you venture out of your home, you're in danger. And where we're taking the story and where we're taking Ellie is like each step of the way, she's putting herself in more and more danger to bring these people to justice. I would say that the world, in every sense of the word, is bigger than The Last of Us Part 1. Both in scale and the amount of physical space that exists for you to explore, for you to encounter other people. Yeah, this route has its perks. Our hope is to make every corner a challenge, make every decision hard for Ellie. And so we do that not just in the gameplay you experience, but also in the level design. So part of that is making certain first, first experiences game. really hostile, be it through weather or through rivers or, or craggy cliffs or slick snow. But we also use it in terms of how blind the player is. Like, what can they see? How safe do you feel? Can you see a threat coming around the corner? You never know if the bullets in your gun are going to be enough. You never know if you can stop and bandage your arm. You can never fully breathe. And we want you to be in alignment with Ellie, who can never fully breathe when she experiences this My trauma. God. For Jackson specifically, Ooh, we like wanted that. to make it feel has his, like a very close-knit kind of community that's focused sense. on family, bit focused on like sustainable ways of living. I obviously have the hydroelectric dam generator that's powering the town, so we have you know, electricity in Jackson, which is not something that maybe players would expect to see in the world. But given that we're further in time, we wanted to show that there are certain people dedicated in the world to rebuilding a life that doesn't revolve around killing people and, and scavenging. These, these are like As you walk around the town, you can hear them. kids laughing. You could see um, people going into restaurants and eating, and it's a very kind of tranquil town. Now, we know there's all these horrible things happening outside the walls, but they've been able to protect the innocence of, of this town. Jackson, in many ways, represents what is at stake for our characters, a, a life of peace and relative comfort, uh, a life where you can fall in love, a place where children can play and it's OK. And I think you know, when we were looking at building out Jackson, it's like, okay, how many of those moments can we represent? What's awesome about the world of The Last of Us is it shows just how precious the things that we take for granted in our everyday lives, how precious those things really are. Whoa! I love that. Seattle that compared place, to Jackson I'm is excited to thing. play. It's really excited. The, more the of a war zone, all, man. I would say. Part of the interesting thing with Seattle or the Pacific Northwest is that there's all this rain and all this foliage and wildlife, and it's this very lush area that if someone were to sell down, it'd be a pretty good place like to sell down just as far as the kind of fruit you can scavenge, the animals you can hunt. And then because it is so lush, because it is so um, teeming with resources, is why there are multiple factions trying to fight over those resources. <laughs> One faction you run into in Seattle is the Washington Liberation Front. When the outbreak happened, the military took some pretty drastic actions and quarantined parts of the country. And this was their way of protecting the population that has survived this horrendous outbreak. And because of that, it led to rise of these resistance groups. And in the first game, we saw the Fireflies. And we heard about other groups. And in this game, we get to see, here's another group that rose called the Washington Liberation Front that was able to defeat the army and thereby take over a lot of their equipment. And they're this very militaristic faction. Based on what happened at the end of the last one, part one, 
And at the same time, you have the Seraphites. And they're a religious group that also came up out of the outbreak that believed that the pandemic came because of sin. They're trying to reset the world and return it to a better place than it was. In The Last of Us, Man. almost any group that has survived this long has to be dangerous. Um, if you're not dangerous, you're not going to survive. You're going to become someone's victim. And the, the two factions models. you run Man, into are lighting. both very dangerous. The WLF has a lot of military equipment that they're able to use to defend the area, and they have large numbers, whereas the Seraphites are very quiet and stealthy and able to use the large amount of foliage to their advantage and they fight more in this kind of guerrilla warfare. I wish How I you deal with them is pro, be different because they have different language, they have different communication style, the scars will whistle to each other with this different language. PS5 they needs have to some really of the stuff that you have. You have a bone arrow, they can hit you with arrows and impale Whoa. you and you have to pull the arrow out. They have big Whoa. sledgehammers and oh, melee shit. weapons. Okay. WLF, they have trained dogs that will Come sniff and attack you. If you get hit by that big of a sledgehammer, you dead. Dogs are a new level of threat Look that Ellie hasn't had to negotiate Come before. On. And hopefully they a create a new complicated choice for the player. I get it. Like, you we saw in like them an opportunity like to, to challenge game. people's perceptions of what a combat setup can be. We wanted to find really hard choices. The dogs themselves have names. They're called out by their owners. We wanted every setup to be challenging. <laughs> wow, the detail. Damn. Oh, that smell. Looks like Infected did this. Yeah. Does it, they should add the option once you hear the dog's course. name. Infected are still You start calling the dog world. just to confuse the dog. We like, wanted to okay. take first our <laughs> basic classes that we had in the first game and say, okay, how do we, what's different about them now? So we'll have scenarios where way more runners, like we can have hordes sometimes of runners coming after you and it might be about just escaping because the odds are just overwhelming. You know, this thing just keeps mutating. There's there's Whoa. certain evolutions of infected that you haven't seen before. Certain new classes. There's the shamblers, which these, kind of have these exploding acid clouds. Uh, when you get near them, you're running down a hallway oh, and you have to nice. suddenly make a decision like, oh, oh do I want to take the damage and go through this cloud, or find some other route, or go back the way I came? And it kind of forces you to on the fly, kind of make new decisions about how you're going to deal with. Uh, the threat behind you or potentially in front of you. The way the world so, again, is, it's about how do we um, make fighting against infected of, again, intelligence. So when you come into space, you're listening to audio from, cues because different classes Uncharted will make four. different sounds. The if you just go in guns blazing and the area, throw caution in the wind, you the could easily get overwhelmed and regret well, like that, that strategy. That level of uncertainty and instability is something our characters have to carry with them every day as they go out into the world to protect the people they love most. And that threat is banging on their door every day. I really hope you make it. Oh boy. So a lot of it we actually saw from the state of play, like the, the snowy area, the buildings and all. So uh, it was more like they kind of reworked it I do feel like State of Play actually gave us the whole idea of how the world worked, uh, but they made this video to kind of like more expand on it. It's an eight minute video, but I did feel like a lot, as I said, a lot of it was actually pretty much explained in the uh, the State of Play. The, the few things that I actually did notice is they said about like how like there's so many factions. Well, I'm guessing how is it? it's gonna work in the game like are we just gonna go through the story and one by one touch upon each of these factions or are they gonna be like an integral really like an integral part of the game where uh, they're always there you're you're always getting in their way or they're getting in your way or it's gonna be like okay this faction and the story ends and now the next faction and the story ends and then you know like the next faction the story ends so that that i'm very intrigued of like how all of that's gonna work and the other thing there's so many elements 
within the gameplay like how like the dogs of one new thing like i actually uh noticed among others was like they said okay like they're gonna the enemies actually call uh by their name and i kind of joked in the videos like can you call like the dog by their name like just to confuse the dog or something like that but like if the dogs are really on your tail and they smell you out, they can sense you. And so, well, to what extent, though? Because I understand they're saying you're always, it's the gameplay wants to make you feel that you're always on the edge. Like something's always happening and you're always on the run. At what point will it get frustrating versus challenging? You know, it's a very fine point there when it, start getting too challenging versus and just annoying as hell uh and you know being unfair so those are some of the elements i noticed and well, actually not noticed they actually said that so let's see let's see i'm very intrigued the game definitely feels huge compared to like the first one and the first one you know went for its time when it came out there were areas where like wow like these are especially like there was this part and i just recently finished it but there was this part where you're you've joined the other uh like the other two guys like the this dude with his uh little brother and you reach this area where they get attack and it's this housing area and it's really good because you can either take the left lane or the right lane and or you can kind of like go through the cars in the middle uh and it's this one big area and there are other similar areas like that where they kind of give you an area to play it and they kind of expanded in this one in the second one they expanded on all of that where they're introducing verticality where the jump button up and down there's the area itself is a lot bigger which as i said it reminds me it really reminds me of uncharted 4 and i'm obviously i'm on the sony side so there are probably other games on the xbox side that they uh, are similar to this or they came before let me know in the comments but i'm i'm taking because i i played only on sony and i've uh, played uh, uncharted 4 that stuck with me so obviously because that's a naughty dog game you know, you get inspired by that, so that's not a problem. So yeah, I I mean I am enjoying everything so far, and I still I can't wait for the game. But again, at at the end of the day, whatever the leaks, I know it's more subsided by now, and uh, things are looking more positive. Uh, but let's see. I am still in Creed, but I'm still. It's they haven't like. There's so much, and you you feel like they're holding back. There is so much, but it's, it's a, that's that you're feeling because of everything that happened. And you're like, okay, what's more to the game? You know, what's more to the story? Uh, there, that's the story uh, trailer that came out. Since then, there's nothing else. It's only been like gameplay and stuff like that and more into the world. But the one thing I did notice was at times her partner is with her. And there are times she is not. And she has that bracelet. Okay. Uh, all I know, this is going to be a depressing ass game. That's all I know. But yeah, there you go. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think. And uh, are you excited? Are you not excited? Are you too excited? Are you worried? Uh, let me know. And yeah, with that, uh, hopefully you liked uh, the reactions. And I know it's a bit late, but still, hopefully you liked it. Uh, thanks for all the support. Please don't forget to subscribe. Also, don't forget to let me in the comments how I'm doing, what I'm doing wrong and right. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you for everything. Uh, stay safe. Take care. And I will catch you all later. Ta-ta.